Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how to convert a JPEG or PNG file to a new format called WebP. The reason why I'm creating this video is because WordPress recently came out with version 5.8 and it now has WebP support built in. Now, this is good news because I personally have been waiting years for WebP to finally be supported by the web browsers and especially by WordPress. So moving forward, I will start working with WebP images for our client websites and for our personal website. Now you're probably asking yourself, what is WebP? Why I need to use it? How is it different? Long story short is, if you go to this uh, article right here, this is technology built by Google. So they've been waiting years for the web browsers to finally kind of catch up to this technology. And here we are in 2021 and it's finally here. It's been a long time waiting, but you can go to this article and if you really want to get super technical into what it is, uh, <laughs> this is going to be really complicated if you look down here. Um, yeah, this goes over my head. I don't understand what half this stuff means, but all you need to know is you can see right here, it is going to be a lot smaller and more compressed for your images. So this is going to help for performance, less bandwidth on your server. It's a, it's a win-win across the board. So in this tutorial, I'm actually going to show you how to take your JPEGs or PNG files and how to convert them over to this WebP format. I'll also be showing you how to upload it into a WordPress website. And in this case, we're going to use Elementor, how you can easily just add it. It's completely seamless. You don't have to add any additional plugins or anything along those lines. Speaking of WordPress plugins, uh, I am going to talk about these two plugins right here. This one's called Short Pixel and this one's uh, Smush. Um, I do not recommend using any sort of WordPress image compressing plugins uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, one of them is confusing pricing structures. Um, they honestly can add a lot of extra bloat on the back end. And I've actually seen performance issues on the front end of your website using uh, one of these plugins. So the technique that I use is this website right here called Squish. And so this is actually built by Google themselves as well. So you're taking a format like a JPEG and compressing it on their systems and then converting it to WebP. So you're keeping it all within the Google ecosystem. So if you use these plugins up here I just mentioned, you're not going to be able to visually see the compression on each image. So while this might take a few extra minutes to do, it's going to give you 100% control over each image you upload. So let's just jump right into it. I'm going to show you how to use this tool right here. I'll leave this uh, link in the description below, but this is the tool I use on our websites and our client websites. So in this tutorial, we're going to replace this image right here with a uh, WebP format. So let's open up Photoshop, export a JPEG, and I'm going to show you how to convert that JPEG to a WebP. So let me get this down to the right size. That container was 760 pixels wide. So I'm just going to lower that dimensions, save as, um, and right here in the format, I'm just going to choose JPEG. And this option right here, I what I like to do is keep this at 12 because we're going to compress it down. So you don't want to compress it now. In Photoshop, keep it as large as you can. So you can see right here, it's at 172 kilobytes. So that's a lot more than what I recommend. So just hit OK. And now we're going to convert that to WebP. So now we can jump over into the Squish.app website. And if this is your first time on the website, uh, the good news about this is you can actually, uh, you see this button right here, it says Install. You can click and this will install this app uh, locally on your machine. So you can actually use this offline. So you don't have to always be online to use this tool. You can install it and then just run it right in your web browser completely offline. That's a really cool feature. So let me go back into this browser here. So the first step we need to do is that JPEG we just saved out and you just click on that, click open. And now you can see right here. On the left side, this is showing you what the image originally was at. So it's around 169 kilobytes. So what we need to do is under the compress on the right side, if you click that box, select this one right here called WebP. And as you can see, just by doing that, we went from 169 kilobytes to 17. So you can see this is a huge difference already. So the good thing about this tool, like I said, is you can visually see the compression because those other tools I mentioned, those other plugins, um, you can't see what the images are going to look like before you render them out. So I, I don't like not being able to see it because in some cases you can lower these settings a lot lower, save a lot more bandwidth, and they still look pretty good. So the good thing about this tool, if you look down here, you can zoom in a little bit. So let me click to 125%. 
And what this slider is, is the left side of this image is the original, and this is the compressed. So if you look right here, the only slider you really need to mess around with is quality. So if I bump this down to really low, like 16, you could see it looks very pixelated. So that doesn't look very good. And it, what I like is you could just kind of slide it right here. So in most cases, you want to be around the 80%. That's usually where the compression is there, but not too noticeable. So let's go to about 80. So that's, a, I mean, you can actually just type in. So let me just type in 80 to give an even number. And if you look right here, um, I know that this video is compressed a little bit, but I'm moving it back and forth. And at 125%, I can see very little difference between the original and this WebP format. So like I said, we went from 169 down to 20. So what you need to do now is just click this big blue button. This downloads it locally. And now we have that file on our desktop. And here it is on the desktop. As you can see, um, the numbers kind of round up. So this was 20.5 kilobytes. It rounds it up to 21. So here's the original at 166 down to 21. So this is a really good feature. This is why WebP is a really good option because you, every image that you have, if you could save that much bandwidth, you're going to get a better uh, web performance score. It's going to be easier for your users to navigate your website. Like I said, it's a win-win across the board. So now let me show you how to upload that into WordPress. Uh, it's just like you would upload any other image. So if you click right here, this is your regular um, media library. So you can just click that and it, let's select the WebP format. So you can see right here, it's .webp, open, and that's it. You can add your alt text right here, which is good for accessibility. And you can see right here, it's 20 kilobytes. We're at 760 pixels wide, that's perfect. So we just click insert to media, and there we are. I'll hit update. We can preview that on the front end. So if you look right here, we have the WebP format, 20 kilobytes and 760 pixels, perfect. If for some reason you have WordPress 5.8 and you get an error when you upload a WebP format, um, that most likely is a configuration uh, issue at your server level. So what I would recommend is if you have 5.8, you try to upload WebP and you get an error, reach out to your hosting company and tell them the problem, they should be able to fix it. So um, I have come across that with um, other people in, in forums where they're saying they can't upload it. It's because the server needs to be able to support the WebP format. So let me show you how to do the same thing, but with a PNG with a transparent background. So here we have a house PNG file, and you can see right here um, on the left side, this is the original format, it's transparent. So if you try to convert this to a JPEG, it gives you like this black background. So the good thing about WebP is it allows transparency just like a regular PNG, and you can compress it. So this is a good thing because this is gonna lower your uh, PNG file size even more. So as you can see, it originally was at 10 kilobytes, and just by doing a WebP format, it's down almost in half. So let's keep this around 80 again. And this doesn't look too bad. The edges are a little jagged, so let's bring it up a little bit more. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So that's why I say I like this tool, because you can visually see it. We're at 83, so let's just download that. And it did shave off a little bit, it went from 10 to six. So it went down 37%. So same thing here, let's click on here, uh, upload, PNG. Let's make sure that the uh, PNG works correctly. So in this case, I can just click and drag that in here. And here we go, it's just six kilobytes. This one was at 512. Um, we'll just type in house for alt text, insert media. And in this case, I had a background color as a test, so let me turn that off. So you can see that the background is actually working correctly. So if I change it right here, you can see that the transparency came through on the WebP. So that works out perfect. And that's it for this video tutorial. I hope this was helpful in explaining on how to convert a JPEG or a PNG to a WebP format and how to add it into your WordPress website. And make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.